King Ashoka was the king of Mauryan Empire. Mauryan Empire was founded by Chandragupta Maurya. Dear students, Mauryan Empire. This in detail we will study in grade 6 about the Mauryan Empire. Mauryan Empire was founded by Chandragupta Maurya. His son was Bindusara and Bindusara's son was King Ashoka. Dear students, how uh, this Ashoka, Ashoka's father was Bindusara. And Bindusara father was Chandragupta Maurya. He was the founder of the Gupta, sorry, Maurya kingdom. So we'll study how this great king Ashoka ruled over India. Now, Ashoka was the greatest king of the Mauryan Empire. He came to throne in 268 BC and ruled till 232 BC. Now, under his rule, the Mauryan Empire covered nearly the whole of the India. Under his rule, the Mauryan Empire covered nearly the whole of India, means from north till southern part and east and west. Everything was covered by this great king, Ashoka. So he was the first Indian king and perhaps the first king in the world to speak directly his subject. So he was the people were very happy by his rule. He was directly talking to the people. People were happy to him. They were complaining. Whatever doubts they had with the happiness, everything people were sharing with the, this great king Ashoka. After Ashoka rose to the throne, he began to a war to conquer the remaining subcontinent. And he fought a violent war with the Kalinga in the northern India. So most of the part he was conquered. Only the part of present day Orissa. Dear students, present day Orissa was called as Kalinga in that time. Students, you can underline this. Kalinga. Present day it is Orissa. Present if we talk about this, it is Orissa. Orissa state. So he wanted to conquer. That portion was left unconquered. So he wanted to conquer that Kalinga in the northeast part of India. And he won also. After a fierce battle took place in this Kalinga and Ashoka won this battle. Clear? In spite of the victory of the third war, Ashoka was not happy. So after his victory, but he was not happy. He was so troubled by the bloodshed and loss of lives. He was nice. So seeing this bloodshed, this loss and loss of people were killed in this Kalinga war. So he was not happy. He renounced warfare and become a Buddhist. So after this war, his life changed in Sukhas because he got very shocked. He renounced. Now he gave up. So after this, he will not fight any war. He renounced warfare and became a Buddhist. He turned to vegetarianism. He gave up all warfare and attempted to build a state based on Buddhist principles. So now, he followed a Buddhism, Buddhist religion, and became follower of Buddhist religion. He gave up everything. He became vegetarian. And he wanted his kingdom to strive for Ahimsa. And he followed the path of Ahimsa. You all know Mahatma Gandhi is also the follower of Ahimsa means not to kill, not to be violent to anyone. That is Ahimsa. Ashoka devoted his life for the welfare of his people. Now, after this war, Kalinga, he gave his life for the betterment of his people. He made the laws less harsh, means less harsh, means which are, are beneficial to people, not harmful to people. He founded many hospitals. He did a lot of charitable work. He got constructed roads for his people, hospitals for his people. Charitable work means useful development of the people. Ashoka ruled more than 40 years. 
years and more than 40 years he ruled the Uttar. This period is often called the golden era in India and this period is called as the golden period in the history of India. He created for initiating a process of transformation and change in the Indian society. And thus, we can say that Ashoka was rightly a great ruler because after winning the battle of Kalinga, he gave up. And he gave up after that all the wars to retain a Buddhist follower. So this was about the his Ashoka students. Now we move towards the Mirabai. You might have heard Mirabai. Mirabai was a devotee of Lord Krishna. Mirabai was a self devotee of Lord Krishna. Clear students? Yes. So she was strictly follower of Lord Krishna. She is regarded as one of the foremost female saints of India. Yes, saints of India. But she was. Now about the childhood of Mirabai. Mirabai was a Rajput princess of Pratford clan. She was a Rajput. Mirabai belonged to Mehta. We belong to our Rajasthan state only, students. Here, Mehta city. It is in Nagore district. We belong to Mehta, a small kingdom of Rajasthan. As a child, she was passionately attached to the idol of Lord Krishna. So, from childhood only, she was very much worshipping of Lord Krishna. She was always having a small idol of Krishna with her. And she was always singing hands and bhajans of Lord Krishna. Here, so Mirabai belonged to Rajasthan. This city, Merta city, it is presently in Nagore district. And from the childhood only, she was follower of Lord Krishna. Then she was married to the prince of Deva at a young age. Yes. At the very young age, she was married. Now, when his, her husband died, Rana Singh, he died a few years later, Mira refused to commit a sati. Now, see, during that time, there was a rule in Hindu uh, mythology that if a husband dies, she has to burn herself, she has to become a sati. Students, you might have watched the movie of that Padmavat, in that also Johar is shown now. It was that in Rajput in ancient time. If a husband died or king died, then the queens or the woman has to burn herself in the pyre of dead body of dead body of husband. So Mira refused to commit a sati. She said she will not burn herself. Saying that she was wedded to Girdar Kopal. Or she said that she had married to Girdar. Girdar means it is other name of Lord Krishna only. So she is married to Girdar. But she refused to, to burn herself. So people got very angry on her family members, on her. And she left the home. She left the palace. She was married to prince. So she left the palace now. In search of Lord Krishna. She spent her all time in prayer, meditation and singing before the beloved idol of Lord Krishna. Her practice of bhakti, worship, horrified the new ruler of Mewar. So Mirabai left and joined the religious community in Vrindavan. So she left and she went to Vrindavan where she was completely devoted her life to Lord Krishna. Mirabai died in Dwarka. During her lifetime, she wrote hundreds of songs expressing her love and devotion to Krishna. So she, her life started at Rajasthan. Yes, she was married to Mewar king. Then she went 
to Vrindavan after the husband's death and she died in Dwarika. Dwarika, you know, it is in Gujarat. Her lifetime, she wrote hundreds of songs expressing her love and devotion to Krishna. Mirabai ignored gender, class, caste and religion boundaries and spent time caring for the poor. Yes, she was not uh, believing in discriminations of gender. Gender means male and female differences, class, upper class, lower class differences, caste, religion. For her, everything was equal. And she gave her life serving for the poor people, caring for the poor people. She stressed on religious devotion and rejected traditional devotion based on sex, class, caste, and creed. She was stressed to religious devotion only. She was only worshipping the religious students. So, this was about the Mirabai. Now, we move towards the next part of this. Clear, students? Now, of the Jamsadji Tata. He is a business tycoon. Jamsadji Tata is the founder of Tata and Steel Industry, India. Jamsadji Tata was born on March 3rd. 1839. So at the time of British rule, students, you can see 1839, it was the British period at the time British people ruled over India. It is a small town in Gujarat. His father, Mr. Vanji Tata, was the first businessman in a family of Parsi priests. Okay, so he was Parsi. Jamsadji Tata was the his father was Muskarvanji Tata and a businessman. Jamsaji left Gujarat and went to live in Bombay. Present day we can call it as Mumbai. So Jamsaji Tata left Mumbai, Gujarat and settled in Mumbai with his father at the young age of 14 years. He studied in Alphonstone College. When he graduated, he joined his father's firm where he worked till the age of 29. So, after completing his graduation, he joined his father's business. And till he gained the age of 29, he worked with him. And in 1868, he started his own trading company. A year later, he acquired a bankrupt oil mill and converted it into a cotton mill. And he got, in 1868, he got a oil mill that he converted into cotton mill yes. and as his Alexander mill and sold it for healthy profit and he sold that also then he set up another business after this cotton mill he sold it too. thereafter Justice Tata set up a cotton mill in Nagpur in 1874 he Christianized it in Empress Mill. Here to introduce new methods to manufacture textiles and put in place of good labor practices. So this also, this cotton mill in Nagpur also gave work to many workers. Good labor practice means many people were employed on this, this industry also. Over to the next 30 years, till his death in 1904, Jamsaji laid a strong foundation of the Tata group of industries. It was Jamsaji's dream for India to have iron and steel company, a world-class learning institution, and a hydroelectric plant. He laid their foundation to ensure that his successors fulfilled these dreams. Throughout India's struggle for freedom, Jamsaji Tata shot to provide economic self-sufficiency to the country. He was indeed a pioneer industrialist. Finally, he was the great industrialist who started for the development of Indian people because he started his business at the time of British people. Clear? And 
He only started the Tata Nagar as an industrial city in Jharkhand. Tata Steel is Asia's first and the India's largest private sector steel company. So iron and steel industry was also started by this Jamshed G Tata in Jamshedpur. Here it was Asia's first and India's largest the iron and steel industry in India at the time of British clear students. So this was about the iron and steel industry in India students. So it was first iron and steel industry started by Jamsedji. Students you can see this picture Jamsedji First iron and steel, where it was studied, students, you can underline this fact also because you have to learn. But Jamshedpur, first iron uh, steel industry was started at Jamshedpur. Okay. In Jharkhand, presently Jharkhand. And with the war, at where he was born, this Jamshedji Tata. He was born in a small town of Gujarat and he shifted to which which part? First he shifted to Mumbai. Yes, then he started there. He completed his graduation and then he started his oil company in 1868. He transferred it into cotton mill and in 1874. He moved to Nagpur. There he again started a cotton mill. And after that, he also founded iron and steel industry. Clear students? And in 1904, he got died. And his dream was there. What was his dream? To have an iron and steel company, a world class learning institution, and had a plant hydroelectric plant students mean where yes. electric power is generated to water that is called hydroelectric plant that were also founded by this Tata Industries industrialist people only and throughout India's struggle to for freedom Jamsesi Tata sought to provide economic self-sufficiency the country and so he is indeed called as a pioneer industrial this students. So students, this was about the three great legends of India. We have talked. They are King Ashoka, Mirabai, and Jamsedji Tata.